The problem that we're seeing emerging now, but becoming even more of a problem in the future, is the mismatch of skills. So at the low end, yes, the workers continue to come, but there actually aren't going to be the jobs for them in the years to come. So if we look in 2020, actually there are going to be about 25 million uh, low-end workers in surplus. However, if we move up the, the, the skills uh, spectrum, as it were, at the high end, yes, China is producing many more workers with, with higher skills, uh, but not at the rate that the economy needs. So over the same time period in 2020, China is actually going to be short 25 million workers with the right vocational skills. Continuing unabated if on current course and trajectory these trends continue, the problem ends up being about a $250 billion challenge for the Chinese economy. Uh, now again, numbers are always large in China, but that is non-trivial. That's in the order of 2 to 3 to 4 percent of GDP. If you look in 2000, China produced about a million graduates a year. Last year, China created more than six million graduates. Uh, but if we look forward, uh, the Chinese economy is going to need in the order of eight million graduates. Uh, if we actually go beyond graduate talent and look at vocational skills more broadly, China is going to need 16 million vocationally skilled um, uh, folk. Uh, and the challenge that we see is actually that the signal that's being sent out now around unemployed graduate talent is actually more just getting the timing wrong by a year or two. And in two, three, four, five years' time, really the Chinese economy is going to have a demand and a need and a thirst for graduate talent, arguably that we've never seen by any economy on earth before. The Chinese economy is just maturing much faster than anyone expected in terms of the sophistication of skills that are being required. But its integration into the global economy is also occurring much faster than people anticipated. We actually think the Chinese government has uh, found some of the secret sauce. It's found some of the solutions required. And it's just a matter of scaling those up. PetroChina, CNPC, provides a good example of the way they've actually grown petroleum engineers uh, over the years. CNPC has actually had its own uh, as it were, internal apprenticeship, internal uh, talent pipeline and, 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 and college that develops these folk. Uh, and it's been around for a long time. In fact, it's been around since the late 70s. The challenge has been we just need to add a zero, maybe two zeros to the number of those that we actually have. And our observations internationally is the better systems around vocational education enable companies and institutions to reach into the uh, secondary school population and to provide better careers guidance, but also start to create some of the career pathways earlier on. And to get young people thinking about different vocational career pathways and setting themselves up earlier and being aware of what it will take earlier than later. And then the other observation that we, we would have is um, some of the private companies in China have actually done a very good job around these boot camps. Uh, the Chinese government is clearly thinking about this and, and there is lots happening. I think there is one question around metabolic rate, just around how can we do it with more pace given this challenge. And I also do think the opportunity for the public and the private sector to work a little more collaboratively uh, around building some of these out we think is going to be um, a real opportunity for the Chinese government going forward. We do think vocational education particularly because of what it does for young people. And the challenges that we think are socially for China, if we don't engage um, this cadre of young people, providing them with the right jobs and the right start uh, in their professional life, we do think not only the economic challenge, but the social challenge for China, uh, the economic challenge is clearly apparent. I think the social challenge may be an order of magnitude larger. Uh, and therefore the policy imperative we think probably goes up several notches.